one particular story, which was called One Ride with Yankee Papa 13, which involved 17 helicopters, four of which were shot down, and quite a lot of people were killed and wounded. And we tried to re rescue a pilot off a ship. We landed alongside a co-pilot from this township, wounded. The co-pilot that had climbed onto our ship had two bullet holes one in the arm, one in the leg, and one we hadn't noticed, which was the third one, which was just under the armpit, and he died. And it was a very sad moment, a very touching moment, when our crew chief broke down, cried, and everybody was very tense because everybody had suffered through it. And so often I wonder whether it is my right to capitalize, as I feel so often, on the grief of others. But then I justify my own particular thoughts by feeling that if I can contribute a little to the understanding of what others are going through, then there's a reason for doing it. His images are absolutely unforgettable. I can recall one in particular, a white Marine slumped to the ground in the mud, in the mire, and there's a wounded black soldier reaching forward to grasp him. And in that instant, it's almost as if Larry had captured something in biblical terms. I could see David reaching out for Jonathan in the Old Testament on those battlefields of Israel. I could see all battlefields. That's what Larry captured. That's what the best of photography catches. A question I'm asked a lot is, how could you go and cover a war? Um, the week before I left for Vietnam, Larry Burroughs was killed in a helicopter crash, shot down over Laos along with uh, 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 Andre Hewitt and Kent Potter of UPI and uh, uh, Newsweek photographer uh, Shimamoto. And that was the question going through my mind. You had to know when, you know, when to shoot and when not to. Because it was more important to come back the next day. Because they were still going to be killing each other the next day. That's the one thing about a war. You know, if you miss the shot on Monday, they'll be out there killing each other again on Tuesday. You can't let yourself think. With the camera, there's this invisible steel shield. It's about six foot thick and about six foot wide. And when the bullets come, they're going to get that GI over there. They're going to get that GI over there, but they're not going to get me because I have that little 35 millimeter camera. It's all up here because what you do is you concentrate on exactly on what you're doing, and you do it. 